Let's begin with the nature of consciousness. I won't introduce a lengthy discussion of the history of current theories regarding the nature of consciousness. Suffice to say that it's a well-debated topic, with much discussion surrounding what is called the hard problem of consciousness, which basically asks why some neurological mechanisms also come with a sense of experience, a rather ambiguous sensation of what it is like to be aware of cognitive processes. Northoff discusses this problem in his book. Most interestingly though, he discusses how the resting state and intrinsic function of the brain can be connected to our experience of consciousness. He does this by analyzing the experience of patients in vegetative states. When an individual is in a vegetative state, their brain is still functioning at some level, but we say that they are unconscious. That is, they have no consciousness. Logically then, by analyzing the difference between the activity of the unconscious brain in someone in a vegetative state, and the activity of a normal brain, we should be able to determine which brain functions are absent in the unconscious person and thereby isolate the processes that are associated with consciousness. If you've done any reading in psychology, you're familiar with the concept of the unconscious mind. We understand that unconscious mental processing can impact our actions and decision making. Northoff talks about how traumatic early experiences can be encoded in our minds so that we are unconsciously, for example, avoiding putting ourselves in certain situations. But we're largely unaware of this unconscious mental activity because it doesn't contain the subjective processing of content that we associate with consciousness. It happens below the level of our awareness. Northoff clarifies, and I quote, the same content, whether a particular event, person, or object can be present in both conscious mode with subjective experience and in an unconscious mode. The neuronal difference between the conscious and the unconscious mode must then be related to consciousness." End quote. In unconscious patients, intrinsic, resting state function does not completely cease. That's why doctors sometimes tell loved ones to talk to comatose patients. Even though the patient isn't consciously responsive, brain imaging shows that there is some brain response to such stimuli. So then there's something about the interaction between the intrinsic functioning or resting state of the brain and external stimuli that causes the emergence of consciousness. This approach challenges what was previously accepted about how consciousness emerges. What Northoff refers to as the extrinsic cognitive approach basically states that the brain is a blank slate until stimuli, in the form of sensory information, activates it. External stimuli enter the brain, it is then activated, and then somehow, a part of the unsolved hard problem of consciousness, leads to a conscious awareness of the stimuli. Northoff thinks this theory is incomplete because it fails to take into account the intrinsic resting state function of the unconscious brain. According to Northoff, and others before him, like the psychologist Carl Lashley, the intrinsic resting state function of the brain provides an organizational template from which consciousness arises. This organizational network includes neuronal networks like the default mode network in the midline region of the brain the executive control network on the outer edges of the brain, and the salience network that assigns salience to external stimuli located in the sensory motor region of the brain. These areas, in that they create the organizational template of the intrinsic state, form a neuronal predisposition to consciousness. Consciousness occurs when external stimuli meet the level, form, and content required to stimulate the neuronal predispositions of the resting state. This leads to consciousness. To put it simply, Northoff says, and I quote, the neural predispositions will account for the necessary conditions of possible consciousness, and the neural correlates will reveal the necessary and sufficient conditions of actual consciousness. Phew. So why is this significant for research into the hard problem of consciousness? Northoff puts it this way, and I quote, the methodological starting point of philosophy is not only different here, but reversed. Traditionally, in philosophy, we start with the mind and continue from there to the brain. Whereas now we start with the brain itself, its intrinsic activity, and extend from there to mental features such as consciousness. What is described as a metaphysical problem between two different existences and realities, mind and brain, is now converted into a transformation problem. How does intrinsic activity of the brain transform neuronal activity into mental features." End quote. 